Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we will be doing the patch 9.18 uh, notes, doing a rundown for that. So let's just get right into it. Okay, I just want to start by saying uh, that this is not the world's patch. So this is going to be a pat world's patch, I believe, is 9.19, which is going to be in two weeks. So this is uh, not the world's patch. So not a lot of competitive play is going to be played on this. I believe, um, but a lot of these changes will have implications for patch 9.18. Um, the way they like to do world's patches nowadays is they put a little bit in on the patch before and then just a little bit on patch 19, no, patch, uh, the world's patch. Um, so a little bit will be right here and a little bit will be on 9.19. Yeah, they're trying to avoid uh, that juggernaut debacle um, where they made the juggernaut buff right before worlds and then nobody knows what's happening. So. Uh, anyways, cool. Overall, I've looked for this patch just a little bit, and I like most of the changes. Um, this is kind of a small patch, but uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. All right, Aatrox. <clears throat> Aatrox passive now heals less against minions, and Q damage to minions is reduced and flattened. So before we actually read the changes right here, what this is trying to do is nerfing his laning phase, um, because a lot of people will pick Aatrox as a weak side top laner in pro professional play get through the laning phase, and then their monster in the team fight is the idea. I have long thought that Aatrox is actually a pretty overrated pick, unless you're a very good Aatrox player or a very good weak side player. For example, like Buipo is a very good Aatrox player and a good weak side player, so Aatrox is a very good pick for him. Um, a player like, let's say, Broken Blade is not the best at playing weak side um, and therefore gets slammed in lane on the Aatrox. So I've always thought Aatrox is a good champion, way overvalued for how much it gets picked and how much it gets banned just people will like spam first pick him there's so many good counters to an atrox where he never even gets off the ground and other champions that spike early enough in the game that it doesn't even matter that he's a menace in the team fight so i think this nerf is going to be pretty big for him in terms of his priority probably just wake up some players that this champion's not super broken this champion will probably still get picked but um by the good Aatrox players, but people are not good at playing weak side or not good at playing Aatrox. Hopefully we'll drop the champion. So let's look at the actual healing nerf. So heals for 25% of damage dealt when stabbing a minion rather than the full uh, the full heal. So that's going to be pretty big for sustainability in lane. You know, people like to chunk Aatrox and then look for a dive on him and just punish him completely. Um, <laughs> damage minions, it used to be scaling 50% to 100%. To just 40% at all levels, which is a pretty substantial nerf. I mean, the key thing with Aatrox is this whole thing just screams to me it's going to be so easy to dive him. So let's say you have like a Kled, um, let's say you have like a Kled Elise or a Renekton Elise, something like that, something that's really great at diving, um, or, you know, Renekton Sejuani, something like that. It would be so easy to execute this now because this nerf right here is whenever he's being pushed in and he's already being chunked by this nerf right here and just in general he's being chunked, you can instantly clear the minion wave with... Uh, your second and third cues essentially after you have your first back timing so this is going to mess this up significantly so again i think this is going to make it where just the good atrox players play atrox now um, or good weak side players so i actually kind of like this nerf i don't actually think he needed this big of a nerf um but probably needed some some of a nerf i, I i'm just happy that bad atrox players are probably not going to pick this anymore, or bad weak side players are probably not going to pick atrox anymore. This will give them the excuse to not do this. Okay, uh, Kali has a big nerf as well. R cooldown increased early, R1 stun removed, and R2 base damage decreased early. So it's decreased early, so it still scales the same way. Um, and the cooldown is up. I don't think this cooldown matters a whole lot. You're really worried about this cooldown, which is only 20 seconds. I don't think that matters all that much. <clears throat> the micro stun and the damage does matter. So these, this little damage change, the first one, actually it's not that important as well. You're really looking about the second one. This might, you know, edge out and make it to where a couple enemies survive every now and then. But you're really looking at this one as the more important one. And it's only a 30 damage difference on 450 and 420. Um, this micro stun thing is kind of a big change. So it's 0.5 seconds. So... Um, it maybe changes the play pattern a little bit, how you're able to just ult in and then instantly E back um, on a stun target. So it guarantees your E proc. So it makes you have to finesse that a little bit more. It makes her team fight ability maybe not quite as good. I don't know how impactful the R1 stun is. Um, I mean, it obviously is impactful for the play pattern. You 
you alt in and then E backwards, but I don't know if this is what's making her broken. Um, overall, I mean, I'm not a big fan of removing something that's really um, key to her kit, this micro stun right here. But the champion does need to be nerfed so that it's not blue side first pick every single game if it's up. Um, I think that creates a problem if blue, if every single game, if a colleague's up, you first pick on blue side every single time, no matter who you are, just about. So I think that's an issue. So I'm happy to nerf. I'm not sure if this is the way to do it. Um, I think this change will work out and she'll still be high priority, but maybe not blue side first pick every single game. So maybe it'll work out. Okay, Annie. Uh, so Annie gets a little bit of a buff. This is really cool. The movement speed. Annie gains 25% plus 1.5% per level decaying bonus movement speed over 1.5 duration. So um, now whenever you proc your little uh, damage reduction shield. Oh, and nerf the damage reduction. And the cooldown went up. I think this is cool. Um, this seems kind of weird. It's not like it's going to make her a pro player or anything like that, but... I just think this is kind of cool that she gets movement. She's a movement speed a steroid now. Wow, you must get a lot in the late game. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Uh, follow up on 9.17 changes. They just gave him a little bit more health. I don't know if this actually makes him come into pro play. Maybe. But I think he's... I don't I don't think he's coming to pro play anytime soon. Just ever maybe a couple niche picks. All right, Caitlyn, attack damage. So bumping Caitlyn's early winning power, so she can punish those who rely more on scaling. Really happy about this changing. Or really happy about this change. Caitlyn is already popping up a little bit. Uh, I mean, obviously it's a tiny amount of AD, but this amount of AD at the beginning of the game does matter a little bit. So the first couple levels maybe can punish people a little bit more. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like Caitlyn, but I've always been a big fan of Caitlyn. I, I just, if there's a player who's able to navigate this champion and actually able to full punish an enemy and make them hug the tower the whole game, escape jungle ganks, um, I'm all about lane pressure. I'm all about punishing your enemies for picking scaling. So um, I really like this champion. Okay, Echo, W cost decrease and stun duration increase. So uh, they just had those buffs on his E, uh, nudging him in towards a more aggressive play style with a higher payout and a lower cost. Um, so the mana was reduced on this ability, which is pretty impactful actually, and the stun increase. So if you're able to actually land this, the stun is increased pretty well. The thing that I'm most, it, this is hard to land in pro play, um, but it does create a lot of zone control if you do actually land it. Um, what I think is more impactful is this early mana cost in your early game. So Echo has a lot of matchups that are difficult for him in the laning phase, or even matchups that work out pretty well for him in the laning phase where he can, you know, jump past your damage and hit you with damage. Um, even in those matchups, uh, like let's say maybe he's good into Orianna if you dodge out on the abilities and then you hit her, you might get chunked a whole lot. And the way that Echo players kind of navigate this and stay away from getting chunked is they just W the minion wave almost every single time it's up. So they W the minion wave so they can walk up create that zone of control so they can safely farm and then get the shield so that if they do get poked um they do get poked then they're able to uh survive it or they put the stun on the ground going for a trade and then they know they're going to take damage on the way out so they'll take their shield on the way out so this is actually impactful for the trading patterns and lane actually um this little buff right here um i think this will actually help him be played more in the matchups that people were playing in them before for example uh faker had already pulled him out in the playoffs um, figure it already poured him out in the playoffs so I think this will actually make it to where the matchups that are good for Echo people are going to be more willing to pick it so I think it's pretty good alright Evelyn R empowered damage amplifier max empowered damage increase the big buff so let's see Evelyn isn't overly weak at the moment I think she's pretty strong actually but we want her to more reliably take down her targets if she manages to get them under execute threshold this is making her like TFT Evelyn um power damage amplifier 100 percent against enemies 140 percent wow this is a huge buff wow this is a huge buff watch out in your solo queue games um wow so the players that already like her might pick her up and pro play players like for example since karen really likes evelyn tarzan really likes evelyn um this may actually put her into pro meta it's gonna be a Destroy people in solo queue. This is going to be insane. Wow. Insane. All right, we're giving Jen a bit more oomph to better bully out greedy lanes. 
uh, base attack damage increase. Kind of like the Caitlyn buff because Jin can bully out lanes. Uh, you know, this buff is nice, but I don't know if that actually makes him playable. Um, you know, Jin is already a lane boy, and this is going to be cool for solo queue, I guess, because he's pretty decent solo queue. But the issue is there's when you pick Jin, you invite uh, being uh, dive comps uh, diving onto you. Uh, so when you pick Jin, you invite that to happen because a lot of dive comps exist. And um, then you don't have, you have like pseudo mobility with Jin with your fleet footwork and your fourth shot and your, you know, your crit movement speed type of deal. But um, it makes it tough to play Jin because you're either getting dove on. Um, if people have dive comps, you don't have a much uh, safe ability. Jin is okay in the tanks because he's able to play safe and, you know, he does uh, execute damage. But if the enemy team is just running a full front line, then you'd probably rather have, you know, more of a hyper carry like Jinx or Kaisa. So the situations where Jin seems good, there's other champions that are already pl already being played that are probably better in that situation anyways, like a Sivir, like a like a Jinx. But, you know, actual hyper carry champions rather than Jin. Jin obviously scales super great into the late game and is decent in the tanks because it's safe for him. But champions like Jinx who just rip people to shreds with auto attacks, you know, the she falls into the same situations where you want to pick Jin. So Jin's in a tough spot. All right, Kaisa. We're reducing Kaisa's consistent damage. Should we have any incline? Um. Okay, I don't think this does anything at all. I think by the time the most impactful rank is um, the last two ranks. And by this time, this attack speed bonus, I don't think matters that much. So I don't think this matters hardly at all. Um, cool, we feel good about the kill changes in 9.17. She ended up slightly weaker than Nintendo. We're buffing her E passive to make her... Five damage. Okay, this doesn't matter at all, I don't think. Um, we send base health buff. Oh, wow. All right, Brock, Brox is somewhere smiling right now. This is pretty nice for players like Brox or Weeson. People who already play Weeson, this is pretty nice. Just actually actual little bit of bonus damage. Only 25 damage, but sometimes that's a difference. 1.8. Um, you're already full health in the jungle clear, so here's just some little nice buffs um, that probably aren't that impactful, but this is pretty cool. All right, this is pretty neat right here. Let's talk about this. Okay, Misfortune's E is barely worth casting at first rank, considering the trade off in mana and which take comment. Uh, so we're buffing at early ranks. Um, this slow is pretty impactful for the early game. It makes it to where you can bully people a lot better. Um, Miss Fortune was already getting picked in niche scenarios. Not not super common, but very niche scenarios. I wonder if this is going to actually make her be played. This is huge right here. These early buffs, and then it's the same late game. Which Miss Fortune has an issue with playing in the late game, unless you have a very good setup for her. So. This will be interesting if this actually makes a difference. Uh, I like this change a lot. This makes her very powerful in solo queue for early game, especially when you have a comet start and you have you know like double double um, <clears throat> double range champions in the bottom lane. So this can be really impactful for solo queue probably, where she was already good. Um, and I don't know if this has an impact on. I think she might actually get picked some. This is going to be very very huge for. Hmm. This is very huge for like bullying lane and um, kind of objective setup in the early game for like first dragon because now you don't have to max E for the slow because you get so much. You can just max Q for damage and punish people in lane. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, Nunu has a big nerf. Uh, this is a solo Q nerf. Um, so in pro play, this doesn't change anything because he's already not being played. Um, cool. These are quality of life changes. So now whenever you get hit by the blinding dart, you can... Your screen makes a green light, so you can tell that you're being wanted. Pretty cool for people playing against. I like the change. You know, it messes with Teemo, makes it to where it's harder for him to play. Um, Noxious Strap. So this is kind of like, this isn't really a buff. Uh, I mean, the fi holding the five charges is cool, I guess, if this stacks while you're dead. Uh, but most Teemo players are constantly using this anyways. Um, so I don't think this matters that much. The scuttle crab thingy is cool. So the scuttle crab no longer triggers mushrooms when it's not in combat. So when scuttle crab's just walking around hanging out, he won't actually walk into your mushroom. So even if he walks into your mushroom, it won't deploy unless it's already doing the zoomy thing where it's already attacking. 
So that's actually a pretty good buff right there. I don't think this makes Nemo being played. Um, but, you know, maybe like a... I don't know. Maybe played like one time. Let's be honest. I don't think so, though. Um, this is just a bug fix. Warwick now properly gains attack speed against all... Oh, he just wasn't before. Okay, this doesn't change anything then. <clears throat> okay, here's a little nerf to Zaya. Um, this nerf is fine. So she loses three armor, so she can be punished a little bit more. So... What I see, when I see this minus three armor, I'm seeing Zaya being picked and then Caitlyn Morgana as a response. Um, and this actually hurting a lot because the minus three armor and the plus two AD on Caitlyn. So I actually see this mattering a lot. So they buffed bully champions um, to bully Zaya out of the game. So I don't think this matters much unless those people pick those bully champions. So um, that's kind of cool. I actually think that's kind of cool because um, Zaya is in every single game, pick or ban. Um, and then the Feather Storm. Cool. Uh, I don't think these matter at all. Maybe the late game one matters. But I don't think this one matters. Uh, this one might matter. I don't think the rank one matters at all. Um, but this is interesting. If this makes it to where like, Caitlyn is just super strong. Because they nerfed the armor on Zaya, um, And Caitlyn can already punish Kai'Sa in lane. And Kai'Sa, Kai'Sa got nerfed for the late game. But it, it doesn't really matter. That nerf is fine. That's pretty interesting. Um, cool. Zoe more sparkles. So Zoe, her early waning phase is weaker than intended right now. Um, so she got buffed. So this is our passive. Whenever she uses the building, she will zap you at kind of like a sheen proc. Um, the ones, the ones that are really impactful are these middle ones right here. Beginning doesn't, beginning got buffed. That's pretty good. <laughs> right here. Let's see. Uh, this is rank four. Rank four, it's plus eight. Rank five. It's plus... Oh, wow. Plus eight as well. Well, that's pretty good. This buff is pretty good. I think Zoe was already good. If you pick poke compositions, siege compositions, I think she was already good. Um, so I think this is going to give players the um, kind of permission to pick this pick. Especially with the nerfs to some of the assassins. Um, you know, she's buffed at the same time as Echo, and Echo can have a decent matchup if you're if you're a good Echo player. So this will be interesting how the Zoe and Echo thing comes out. If that makes like a Zoe Echo meta, that'd be so weird. That'd be so weird if it was a Zoe Echo meta. Um, <clears throat> I think this is actually, I don't, th I think this isn't that big, but I think it's good. But I think it's big because this is just going to remind people that Zoe's a good champion and actually make her uh, pick ability super high. Okay, um, bug fixes. much um skins got oh that's a prestige skin weird uh zyra khan i'm not a big fan of this skin rakan's my favorite champion i'm not even a big fan of this skin. and star cronian zoe looks pretty cool all right cool so the big head points to summarize this up is hopefully people stop picking atrox who aren't good atrox players or good weak side players hopefully that's what this does so big nerf in the early game um macaulay uh still Still will have high priority, but maybe not, maybe not first pick every literally every single draft. Um, Annie doesn't really matter. It's kind of cool though. Um, Aurelian Soul probably doesn't matter, but which, but it's kind of cool right here. Um, maybe it will matter for people who already like the pick. Uh, Caitlyn, this buff is nice. It's especially nice accompanied with Zaya's armor nerf. So that's what's really cool with that. Uh, so maybe this is like actually <clears throat> when you want to first pick Zaya, you have to kind of avoid the Caitlyn pick. Um, cool. Um, Echo, this is great for Echo's laning phase because you like to spam this in lane to avoid this. So this might make Echo in his matchups more playable. Evelyn might show up with the players who already like to play her, like Tarzan, Svenskaren, stuff like that. This buff is pretty big. Um, cool. Jen, kind of like the same buff that Caitlyn got, but I don't think Jen will be getting played in the game because the situations where you want to pick Jen, you can just pick Caitlyn, you can pick Sivir, you can pick Jinx. So uh, I don't think this matters. Uh, this nerf doesn't really matter that much, except for maybe we maybe getting punished more in lane. Maybe just players will think twice about picking Kaisa every game, but I don't think this nerf actually matters right here. Not that big. Uh, so I think she's still super high priority. Kale doesn't matter. We send it's just nice for the people who already play We send like you know Broxus and Scarin, people like that. They're gonna like this buff. This is just a Broxus and Scarin uh, patch. This is a Sun Scarin patch. Um, this is pretty big because now, now uh, you can max Q every single game because you get the big slow. So kind of early setup for maybe you have a double range lanes 
Um, <clears throat> you can punch people a little bit harder, have more set up around objectives in the early game. So this is kind of cool because you can go straight for the Q max and just uh, punish people in lane. <clears throat> Still, her late game uh, doesn't really get improved very much. So I think niche scenarios, maybe Misfortune gets picked. <clears throat> New new and whoop uh, changes don't matter because he already wasn't being played. This is just a solo queue change. Uh, Teemo doesn't really matter. These changes are kind of cool over here, but doesn't well not gonna show up. This is just a bug fix. Doesn't matter. Um, like I said, this only matters because <laughs> this is the only thing that's interesting to me because uh, the bully the bully marksman got buffed uh, with their AD, so this might actually end up mattering. Um, this doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, maybe this maybe this rank two one kind of matters. Twenty seconds. Rank three, maybe, maybe it matters, but this rank one doesn't really matter that much. This is just uh, a little buff that's going to remind everybody that Zoe is a good champion. Um, and hopefully, um, I mean, a lot of people don't like seeing Zoe. I kind of like seeing Zoe. Um, maybe she'll start getting played a lot more. I think she might become super high priority now, now that this buff came through. Anyways, all right, that's it for patch 9.18. 9 Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you on the next video. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.